What is up YouTube, it is Rob Stark, and in today's video I wanted to do a map breakdown of Mushroom Cave. I want to give you all my tips and tricks for the map, tell you where you should be running, what sort of team comp you should be using, any strategy you should have for Mushroom Cave. Yeah, alright, so let's get into it. So first, to start off, one of the most common mistakes I see, especially at the lower trophy levels, is people grouping up too much, especially in the middle, and not having well-defined lanes, and not having well-defined roles. So, I'm going to get into it later, but as far as the lanes... Oftentimes you see too many people, either two people um, very close together in the middle or three people even, especially at the lower levels. If you end up with two people in the middle, you want to try and have, you know, one on a far edge, uh, one of the right edges, and then another one more on the left edge. That way there's some space in between them. So if there are area of effect throwers going on, Poco, Dynamite, anything like that, they're a little more spread out and it's harder to hit them. Especially with any sort of sniper, they can't just fire directly down the middle and hit one or two of them. That's one of the most common things. And then as far as lanes, uh, you definitely want to define roles. So one of the most important roles, obviously, is defining who your main gem carrier is. And this is going to be the person uh, mostly in the middle of the map. And they're going to be sort of a support character. It's often going to be sort of mid-range or long range. They're not going to be exactly right up front in the action. Uh, they can sort of stick away from the front. They're probably the furthest back from most of the brawlers on your team. Um, the best gem grabber on this map, in my opinion, is Poco. Um, I think Bo is a close second, and then Pam is a close third. Those are probably the main three I would recommend. There are others you can use, but those, in my opinion, are definitely the best for this map, as they all have a good amount of health. Poco, especially with this heal, very much value on this map. They both deal good area damage, so there's a lot of opportunities for them to do a good amount of damage so as the gem grabber you're mostly going to want to be taking that middle roll so this way you can either support your your teammate on the left or the right and then you can also be crashing up in the middle so most often your first shots as a gem grabber is going to be often towards here as oftentimes there's going to be two people well it was a bad arrow but there's often going to be two people um, generally who are over there so that's probably your most opportunity for the maximum damage. You could possibly shoot left as well at the beginning. Um, and then you're also gonna wanna have someone who is what I call aggro. So this is gonna be someone who can deal a lot of damage by themselves. They have a good amount of health as well. They can survive on their own. They're often pescering the enemy. They're great um, sort of by themselves, as I was saying. And they're gonna be going left. And depending on how the enemy starts out, they're either gonna be going sort of middle and taking a few shots, either oftentimes here, or if they're being aggressive, it might be towards the right middle. They're actually taking a few shots there, that's what I like to do, and then going around here and trying to pressure them, push them back that way, and then eventually going behind this wall. Um, if they do get an opportunity, they might end up going behind this wall and then crashing again over here to help out their teammate on the far right. But in general, they're gonna be going far left to start out and that's going to be aggro so the best characters for that are generally going to be anita is very good on this map especially with her bear she offers a lot of control shelly is also very good tara is another good option you could use an al prima or a bull but you definitely have to keep in mind to not destroy walls uh, with those characters as late game they can be not as good now your character on the right is often going to be a thrower throwers are very good on this map as there's definite lanes, so there's enemies generally have to run in certain directions or certain ways if they want to get somewhere. So there's a lot of choke points. Barley is very good on this map, uh, offers the most area denial. It's very easy for him to control on this map, keep enemies away. Dynamite, also very good. You could also use a spike as he can sort of throw around corners. Um, probably he's the third best option as far as that goes. Now you could use a support brawler as well, like a Shelly or a Tara in this role but they're honestly not as good now and they're going to be going right and their main thing is they're going to be throwing to the uh, middle right first off most oftentimes and then they might be throwing uh, to the far right as well to try and keep them back and their main thing in the beginning is just trying to sort of keep them back and establish position and eventually what they want to try and do is push up to this wall and then behind that wall they can really do a lot of damage and it's very hard to approach them and then they can throw here to any, any enemies that are hiding behind that wall. And they can sort of push them back in any sort of direction. Now those are going to be your three starting lanes. Now I'm going to go into a different picture. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like, right? So these are going to be your positioning. 
at the start of the game or at any sort of neutral place. So if there's any part of the game where neither of you really have control of the map, uh, maybe some of you just died, it's sort of a one-on-one, -on -one, and then you sort of both of your teams regroup and come back. This is what it's going to want to look like. You're going to want to have your gem grabber in the middle where they're closest to the gem mine, and they can sort of help out their brawlers on the left or the right if they need to. Now you're also going to have your thrower and or support on the far right where they can really take advantage of those walls and they can punish anyone in the lanes. Sometimes you see throwers in the middle, but honestly, this is sort of a short-term solution. It's really not very good, especially late game. Um, it's honestly not able to do as much damage. This sort of relies on people coming into your shots as opposed to being able to force them away. So I really don't like throwers in the middle as much, but it can work. And then your aggro is going to be on the left um, where they can really sort of apply damage and they can push enemies back towards the middle and then the thrower can even push them back further. Now, one thing on this map is there are abilities to where you can do what I like to call crashing, where one of the brawlers on the left or the right sees someone being too aggressive. Say, for instance, there's an enemy um, coming in sort of in the middle. Oh, I did not mean to use an arrow. I meant to use a line. Say there's an enemy coming in towards the middle, and they're sort of crashing in too far down the middle. Now, maybe you are the aggro, and you're sort of just idling over here, healing up possibly, one thing you can do is you can crash temporarily, take a few shots, and then you rotate back and you come back around. And this is often very good as it creates a sort of three on two, and this makes it a lot harder for the enemy to really be able to deal with that damage output, and often you can get at least one kill, and then you have a permanent three on two, and that's where you can really establish control. Anytime you see someone sort of being too aggressive, those are usually great times to crash, um, usually one of those someone on the side where it's often one-on-ones or two-on-twos and then you can sort of add a teammate in to come crash over, you know, fall down to the side, take a few shots and rotate back over to their original positioning. All right, so now I want to talk about spawn trapping the enemy. So in smash and grab, spawn trapping is one of the biggest things. So in any smash and grab map, you always want to know how can you spawn trap the enemy. If you can spawn trap them, you have permanent control of the mine until they're out. It really establishes control of the map. It makes it much harder for them to come back into the game. It makes it hard for them to even get close to the gem mine. Um, you always want to do this in any smash or grab map. So on Mushroom Cave, in general, you want to have your support and thrower on the right where they can really take advantage of that wall over there. It makes it hard for them to hit. They can sort of throw. Dang it, I keep meaning to use the wrong thing. They can throw in those two lanes. So anytime the enemies are coming out, they can sort of throw at them. Uh, if they're being more aggressive, maybe they can start out over here uh, a little further up and throw even further up. And then as they get closer, they sort of fall back. In general, with any sort of spawn trapping technique, generally you start up a little aggressive and then you take a few shots as you're falling back and then you establish position. So typically for the thrower, you're going to establish position behind this wall. And if you're the aggro, you're going to be taking shots over here generally and then you're going to be falling back right and your main spot once they're sort of spawned and if you weren't able to kill them right after spawning you're going to want to be often behind this wall generally um, this way if the enemy gets too aggressive if they push up on any of these two lanes you can take shots at them and often you'll have help from at least one of your teammates now as the gem grabber when you're trying to spawn trap you really don't want to be too aggressive one of the things you can do is you can sort of leave gems behind, let them spawn and let them build up. And then you can come forward, take a few shots, come back, heal up. And you don't have to grab those gems right away too. One of the things you can do, sort of just let them spawn. And then since you have control of the map, there's really no need to grab them right away unless it's going to give you a countdown. So what that does is it sort of doesn't let the enemy know exactly how many gems you have. So say you have six gems and you're spawn trapping them. You let a couple spawn, 20 seconds go by, you still have six gems. They're really not exactly sure how many are out there possibly. And then all of a sudden you come back, you grab three, and then you're at nine. And a couple seconds later, you're at 10, you have countdown, and they're stuck in their spawn and they don't even know what's happening. So that's often a good tactic on this map as well, really any map. Okay, so I just want to go back to this map really quick. So I want to make another point. So one of the things on this map is, as I was saying, throwers are very strong on this map. So you may also find yourself struggling versus throwers. So if that does happen, one of the things you want to try and do is destroy whatever wall they're using to throw behind. So a lot of times you actually see throwers over here, and I really don't think that's the best position, but if you do, 
you can just try and destroy that wall or you're going to end up seeing them sometimes behind this wall if they're sort of pushed back um, and maybe you destroy that wall it's going to be up to you you don't always need to but if you don't have a throw on your team versus them it can definitely be a good idea Okay, so just for a quick recap, as far as team comp, in my opinion, the best team comp on this map is something like a Poco. You could also do a Bo or Pam, but preferably Poco, and then a Nita or a Shelly or a Tara, and then a Barley or a Dynamite or a Spike. That's often the best combination on this map. I think it offers the most control, makes it very easy to spawn trap, makes it easy to get out of your spawn as well, and it makes it easy to just establish control of the map and keep control of the map. Also, if you're in a team, before you start, try and establish what each person is doing as far as what role they are and where they're going on the map. Who's going middle, who's going right, who's going left. Always try and establish this in any game you play, especially in Smash and Grab. Ideally, you want to establish control of the map, and then you can start spawn trapping the enemy. And then once you're near countdown, you save up your super, and as you're falling back, you have opportunities to use your super, and it makes it much easier to keep your gems and keep countdown alive. Obviously, once countdown starts, you want to start falling as far back as you can into your spawn. The closer you get, the more likely you're going to be to keep your gems. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm just going to run some gameplay in the background. All right. I'll catch you next time. to hold on so gotta find it first but here i am cause i've been laying under palm trees waiting for the summer knowing there's nowhere to go cause i am happy